Hello! So, I was encouraged enough from my last video to do another one. So, welcome back if you were here before and thanks for watching that. And if you are new or returning, please press the like button and subscribe. So, today we're going to look at how to control the Tesla using just our watch. If you've got a Tesla, you'll probably have the app on your phone and it does pretty much everything you need it to including flashing the lights, unlocking the car, opening the boot and other things besides. But what if we could do that without going through the process of taking our phones out of our pockets, having to unlock it, opening the app and then selecting the function. Well, this is where the Tesla for Watch app comes in. And I've had it for a little while and I've been using it to check it out properly. So how much is it? Well, it isn't free and at the time of making this video it was £11.99 pence, and that's the same in US dollars and you can buy it from the app store on your phone which is what I did and it'll transfer automatically to your watch through the watch app. When you do download it you'll need to input your username and password for your Tesla account into the system. There are no security issues. The app uses a token system which means Tesla provides the app with a token to sign into your account. The app never actually receives your Tesla credentials. Once signed in, you'll have all the functions that you have on your phone, but conveniently, they're now on your wrist. And once set up, to access the app, you can either select it on the home screen of your watch, or, like me, you can set up a complication on your watch face, which means you'll have the car battery information at a glance and an easy-to-reach button to get into the functions proper. So what do you get for your money? Well, let's look at the app working and see what you can do with it and if it is worth the money. So when you open the app, you'll see that the battery information and name of your car is right at the top. If you tap the name, it'll tell you the model of the car, the year, the software version and your VIN number. Pressing the little arrow at the top left takes us back to the main screen. And from here, we have the battery percentage and if we press the battery icon it'll toggle between the small and large displays which is a good feature for people who wear glasses because these screens are quite small. If we tap the mileage remaining icon it will display or hide the estimated range based on consumption. Now the good thing is with this over the Tesla app is that the watch displays both the percentage and the range left in miles whereas the Tesla app is either one or the other. Then, under the battery icon, we've got three shortcuts to functions that we might use most. And these are the climate control, the opening of the trunk, and the lock and unlocking buttons. So if we press the climate control, this will turn it on to what we had it set at before, and it will indicate that it's on. It's just as fast as the Tesla app. It takes just a moment from pressing it to actually turning it on or off, and I use this quite a bit. So we have the front next to the climate control and this is really convenient for me because I use this a lot for shopping bags. It's much easier pressing the button or asking Siri, which will come to soon, with bags in my hand instead of having to put the bags down and getting my phone out of my pocket. We've got this warning on the watch face as we go along and that will tell us that we've got the front open. Next is the lock and unlocking button for the car itself. This is a lesser used feature for me as the car locks and unlocks itself when I'm stood next to it anyway and obviously I'll need my phone in my pocket for that because I don't have the cellular watch. After this we have the temperature controls and the watch tells you how cold or warm it is inside and it gives you the outside temperature of where the car is located. Pressing this gives you the option to change the target temperature of the car so in winter it's really easy to set the car to something comfortable for us to get into. And again, this is all done without taking our phone out of our pockets. Next, if we swipe right, we've got other options. The main one on this screen for me is the ability to open the charge port. Just tap this and your watch will tap your wrist and that acknowledges that you've pressed something and it'll pulse white to indicate that the charge door has opened. Press it again to close the port. This, like the front option, is one of the main reasons I got this app. Ordinarily, I'll go to the car to plug it in and I'll have to open the door 
to release the charge port lock and then I'd have to press the charge port itself and then lock the car again. This cuts out that process and it just saves me having to have my phone on me in these occasions. Some other options on this screen include opening the boot, defrosting and locating where the car is on a map. You can also vent the windows from here. So pressing this, all four windows will open to let some cool air in. Again, the watch will give you a warning to tell you all the windows are open so you don't forget. Being able to flash the lights is handy and you might think it's a gimmick, but we've all been in a car park, we've all struggled to find our cars. So being able to do this to find your car or honking the horn is a really handy feature that's been put into this watch app. One fun feature that's been added since the app was made is the compass feature. Pressing this will assist in locating the car and it will actually count down the distance you are from the car. It's a bit like that child's game you used to play when something was hidden and you'd tell somebody they were getting warmer or colder. And again, this feature will be quite good in a busy car park. But one of the things that bothered me when I downloaded this app, other than giving it my username and password, was will this app drain the car battery continually by waking the car up to pull some information? Well, there are a few settings that can be changed. If you want to see at a glance, then you'll need to keep background updates switched on. This will take information from the car, but the downside to this is the car will be walking regularly. By default, the watch will check the car every hour. You can change this, and I've changed mine to the maximum 5 hours, as there's just no need to keep waking the car up all the time to pull this information. While in these settings, you can, can change the control order. So pressing that gives you more quick controls on the main screen, which makes the app even handier. So since this app was created, Siri has been added, and it adds a new level of convenience to how you use it. The app doesn't actually come with Siri commands by default and you have to go through a few steps in order to get it to work, but it is worth it. On the iPhone, you need to ensure that you've got the app Shortcuts installed. Open the app, go to the All Shortcuts section. In here, you'll see a few Apple shortcuts already created. Click the plus icon in the top corner and then press Add Action. Search for the watch app for Tesla, and from there, you'll see a long list of actions that you can create a series shortcut for. Choose the one you want to add and name it, and that's it. From there, so long as you ask Siri exactly what you typed in the name, it will action it. This is a feature I really wanted, and I'm pleased it works so well. So that's it. There isn't really anything I don't like about the app. It's condensed the phone app down into an even more convenient form and put it onto our wrist. Adding Siri is a game changer and I think it was worth the money. I don't often pay for apps, but out of the apps on my watch and my phone, I would probably say that this one adds the most convenience and actually does the most, so it is good value for money. So what do you think? Will you download the app? And is there anything that you would want to add or take away from it? Let us know in the comments. But that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.